Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting to all of you. Uh, my name is Peter Webster. I'm a senior scientist here at Solid Biosciences, and I'll be discussing how we are approaching advancing AAV design, leveraging the synergy of scientists and AI. Um, so really the focus of my talk here is going to be around the collaboration of Solid Biosciences, a, a leader in muscular rare disease therapeutics, and FormBio, who's a leader in predictive AI modeling, um, bioinformatics, and software engineering. Um, so first off, you know, why AI? And I'll, I'll stop there and say I'm a molecular biologist. I'm not an AI expert. So if you have specific um, questions about AI, I, I encourage you to reach out to my uh, FormBio colleague. Um, so AI is, is really good at analyzing vast data sets. It's really good at identifying patterns and optimizing parameters and then taking those data sets and, and handling the, the in data intensive tasks. All of which are not things that humans are, are necessarily good at, at, at doing. So at what stage should or, or could AI be applied? Um, and really at, at Solid Biosciences we're looking to apply AI from the onset. Um, so as soon as we're designing the genetic payload, as soon as we, are, we have a drug candidate, we're looking to apply AI to model what we have in our drug product. You know, what does the, the DNA profile look like? Um, as we move forward with a, a drug candidate into vector production, we are using AI to, to look at how the, the different capsid choices are, are impacting our DNA profile. And then finally, uh, as we scale up, as we go from shake flask to two liter bioreactors um, to the thousand liter scale, again, using AI and using um, FormBio's expertise to, to help us understand how those changes are gonna impact our, our resulting product. Um, so I'll just briefly touch on some vector design tools and considerations. So we have a drug candidate. Um, really the, the first thing that we're looking to do is understand what exactly we have. We know we've designed uh, a DNA construct that's going to potentially make a, a therapeutic protein. We just don't know what else is in the product. We don't know what percentage of full genomes we've made. Do we have a, a propensity for truncation? Are we mispackaging a lot of, a lot of DNA? Um, and this is where we're really leveraging NGS um, and form by his expertise to help us understand what we have in, in our drug product at the onset from our, our drug candidacy. Um, we, we are not well positioned um, to look at large amounts of NGS data um, and FormBio has unique expertise in that data analysis that's allowing us to take vast amounts of NGS data and turn it into usable, actionable um, analysis. Like I mentioned, um, NGS is kind of our, our chosen data set. Um, it gives you a really powerful and, and really comprehensive look at your DNA profile of a product. It's not without its drawbacks and, and assumptions, um, but in general gives a really correlative look at your DNA product. Um, our chosen platform is PacBio uh, for its long read sequencing techniques. Um, so we run PacBio, we give FormBio our, our data set, and then they turn it into um, an analysis that we're able to use to leverage and, and make candidacy selections and, and make important decisions. So when I'm talking about our, our DNA profile, um, really what I'm talking about is characterizing the different molecular species in those vector particles. Um, like I said, we, we know we've made a, a DNA construct that is potentially making a, a therapeutic protein, and we want to know what else we have in there, what frequency of the reads are aligning to our, our gene of interest, what frequency of the reads are aligning to, to our, our plasmid, our helper plasmid, our rep cap, um, are they all single-stranded or are they self-comp DNA, potentially representing snapback genomes. Um, really we, we want to understand holistically what our, our DNA profile is. So just looking at a, a top-down view here, um, when we first get the NGS data set, you know, we take all of our reads, align them to our reference sequences. Um, so on the bottom there, you're getting a graph of all the reads aligned to the different reference sequences. Um, on the right in particular, the two green bars, the larger one is the, all the reads aligning to our gene of interest that are single-stranded. And the smaller of the two green bars is our gene of interest aligning reads aligning to um, 
self-comp DNA or snapback genomes. So if we received this pro DNA profile, it would probably give us pause um, on this drug candidate and potentially make us want to go back and, and look at why we're seeing so many snapback genomes. Taking it a step further and, and going down a step, um, so we're taking all of our gene of interest aligning reads and characterizing them um, as far as the specific molecular species that we're seeing. So what percentage of them are full length? What percentage of them are fragmented? Um, are we getting any backbone alignments? Um, and here's where we'll find out if we have any specific hot spots, hot spots for truncation, as we'll get a, a high frequency of a similar number of reads. Um, we can figure out if we're seeing fragmentation near the F5 prime ITR, the three prime ITR. Um, really, we're getting a, a really rich data set here of the different molecular species in our product. And finally, we can characterize our host cell uh, contamination. So not only, you know, how much we have, where it's coming from in the host cell, um, in the, the host cell itself, in the genome. Um, and this is really important for holistic understanding of the DNA profile and can be useful for regulatory filings as well. So now, now that we know what we have in our product, we can use in silico tools and AI to model and understand why we're seeing it. Um, and, and really what we're looking for is to understand, um, you know, why we're seeing the, the profile that we saw in the NGS. Um, and what in silico design and, and AI is allowing us to do is, is understand the truncation propensity of a different DNA construct, um, the percent full yield, uh, and methylation. And these are all correlative back to the NGS data, um, allowing us to really understand, you know, why we're, why we're seeing certain data sets. So briefly, you know, what might cause truncated genomes? Um, really what we've seen is secondary structure formation and long repeats are kind of the, the key drivers of hotspots of truncations. Um, but recently we've also seen that capsid, it, capsid choice itself can drive different um, packaging profiles and truncations. Um, so really what we're, we're looking for is, is understanding, you know, what the DNA sequence is, is telling us and if we're seeing a lot of secondary structure formation. Um, like I said, we're, we're using AI and in silico design to, to model these, these different things, um, and we're using form sites, um, form bios, form site AI to, to do so. Um, one of the more important outputs of this AI modeling is this truncation propensity map. Um, so this directly correlates with the NGS data, or is meant to directly correlate with the NGS data, um, that's showing us the, the fragmentation profile. So on the left, you're seeing the truncation propensity um, mapped along the genome. Uh, on the top, you have the reverse strand, and on the bottom, you have the forward strand. Um, so interestingly here, you're seeing that the reverse strand is showing a significantly lower propensity for truncation versus that, that forward strand. And this is really important for us when we're designing our vectors and our, our constructs to understand that, you know, they gonna, both the reverse and forward strands are going to have different uh, truncation profiles and that we need to optimize both of them as, as they're both going to get packaged in our final product. Next, we typically look at the secondary structure um, formation and, and where they're predicted to form. So again, on the left, we're seeing the prediction for secondary and tertiary structure formation um, mapped along the genome. Um, you're seeing in that promoter region, similar to the, the previous slide, a lot of predicted secondary and tertiary structure formation. Um, and this is correlative with the truncation propensity map as shown by the shaded um, green regions there. Um, so again, this is adding to our understanding of, you know, why we're seeing some NGS data and what we could see in the future um, with a, a Finally, um, we look at the prediction of CPG islands. So methylation of Cs and Gs can have a, a large immune impact. So in general, we try to limit the amount of, of CPG islands. Um, and and FormBio's AI allows us to look at the GC content throughout our genome and predict where we're likely to see 
methylations on these C's and G's. Um, so taking this all together, you know, we, we really have a, a holistic understanding of what we're likely to see in, in a produced vector. And what's really powerful about this AI tool is that we're able to compare multiple vectors, multiple promoters and, and gene sequences um, all together very quickly and, and make decisions. So we get a readout like this and we're able to see that um, you know, certain promoters are likely to, to have more propensity for, tr for truncation, leading to us to potentially uh, rule those out um, as we move. Um, so finally, you know, we take this, we take this data and we can really design a, a robust and, and um, manufacturable um, gene construct that's likely to work as we're moving forward in, drug, uh, in our drug development. So here we have our coding region plus an original promoter with a significant amount of predicted secondary structure. Um, Based on the AI analysis, we were able to switch out, uh, switch out that promoter with one that has fewer predicted secondary structures um, and truncations, allowing for a, a cleaner DNA profile. Uh, in, in and just wrapping this up, um, you know, now that we've modeled what our DNA constructs are, are looking like, you know, now we take them into the, the wet lab validation. So we're taking these, these, modeled, um, these modeled constructs and moving forward with in vitro and in vivo studies. Um, and what this has allowed us to do is instead of taking tens or, or hundreds of, of constructs into, into these wet lab validations, we've narrowed that down to only the constructs likely to, to work the best, um, allowing for much faster development and an acceleration of our programs. Um, so just some final thoughts, um, you know, really the, the collaboration of, of scientists and AI can be a really powerful tool for accelerating drug development and uh, um, moving, moving programs forward. Um, I'll end and, and ask if there's any questions in the audience. Thank you.